Alright guys, so every day we are moving closer and closer to the edge of oblivion. And let's talk about the economic conflict between the US and China. We are going to see massive fireworks in 2025. And this has the potential to cause either a great meltdown in all the markets or an economic meltdown is coming, where global trade starts to collapse and massive layoffs begin. And let's set the stage here. According to the betting market, the sentiment for Trump win is off the hook. There's a 64% chance of Trump getting back into the office. So we won't be analyzing Kamala's policies. Unless there's some very big upset this week, Trump will be US president again. And he's going to bring a big trade war with him. Trump's mission is to make America great again, fair enough. To bring back US manufacturing and by extension, industry jobs back as well. And to accomplish this, he could be unleashing an incredible trade war on the world. Now he has promised a slew of punishments. We have reciprocal tariffs, you punish us and we'll punish you. He also threatened companies like John Deere who are thinking of offshoring production to Mexico. But just at the base level, his tariffs are terrifying. He would impose a 60% tariff across the board on China. In addition, the rest of the world could be hit with a 10% tariff as well. And this includes the EU and Asia. And before you say this can't happen, Trump's understanding of economics is very different from ours, from you and me. We're going to be a tariff nation. It's not going to be a cost to you. It's going to be a cost to another country. I heard Kamala the other day, comrade Kamala. She said, oh, if you do that, he's raising your taxes. No, no, no. I'm not raising your taxes. I'm raising China. And all of these countries in Asia and all over the world, including the European Union, by the way, which is one of the most egregious. We cannot overstate the danger of a global tariff war. A 10% import tax could mean serious consequences. Prices for US consumers will go up or US importers have to eat the tariff. And that will impact US workers as well. Either way, it's not good. For the rest of the world, it would mean selling less to the biggest consumer market in the world. According to the IMF, the trade war will decimate global growth. By the end of 2025, global GDP could drop by 0.8%. And in 2026, output could collapse by 1.3%. The impact could be even worse than a wide-scale Middle East war. Supply chains will be broken and many industries, especially in Europe, will collapse. Trump isn't going to stop at just 10%. He wants to force countries to remove all tariffs on the US. And he's going to make a very big gamble. And they use it against us. But India is very tough. Brazil is very tough. There are certain countries, I can tell you everyone, I can give you from top to bottom. China is the toughest of all. But we were taking care of China with the tariffs. So we're going to do a reciprocal trade. If anybody charges us 10 cents, if they charge us $2, if they charge us 100%, 250%, we charge them the same thing. While everyone suffers, Beijing is going to take this as an economic war as well. China's manufacturing is so cost-effective that even all the existing tariffs can't stop Chinese exports coming into the US. Four years after the trade war in 2018, China's exports to the US are climbing back up. Even though half of the goods have tariffs of up to 25%, Chinese manufacturers can still compete. To reassure US manufacturing, Trump has decided he needs to cut off the exits. Stopping US companies from offshoring is one thing. But he also wants to cut away Chinese goods to force companies to make stuff back in the US. Now, Trump is a very big wall card. And to be honest, we have no idea what he'll do in office but he could very well escalate the trade war with China to new crazy levels. According to UBS, a 60% tariff rate on Chinese exports will clobber their economy. GDP growth in China could drop by half. So in 2025 and 2026, Beijing could see GDP growth by only 2% or 3% at best. And this is economic decoupling. China will have to sell more stuff to the rest of the world. They have to work with middleman countries like Mexico to get all their goods into the US. And this is going to compress margins and profits. Either way, China is going to get hit as well. Now, before you think this is impossible, we already have to remember Biden has slapped Beijing with a range of tariffs. EV tariffs are now 100%. Semiconductor and solar cells will rise to 50% by 2025 next year. Going down the list is a disaster. 
Steel and aluminum will hit 25%. Batteries also at 25%. Critical minerals and even rubber gloves to reach 25% as well. So going up to 60 is just another economic escalation. Now Trump believes that tariffs, they are money-making machine. You slap a tariff and the money magically rolls in. But we all know that's quite misguided. If China stops exporting to the US, you won't be able to collect the import taxes in the first place. But his confidence is out of this world. I saw the other day a report that they issued that if we end up in a war with China, we cannot win, we're not strong enough. So I said to myself, assuming that's true, how stupid are you to put out a report like that? How stupid. Why would you put out a report? Then they'll say, oh, Trump is not truthful. No, I'm smart. You don't put out reports like that. And it's not true. We would kick their ass. It's not true. Now, I don't think Trump is lying. He really does believe he can win this trade war. It's crazy, it's dangerous, but 2025 will be financial Armageddon. And if you're China and you see this, you're horrified. You know it's time to mobilize the economy. There's no room left for half measures and you can't really jawbone your way out of a trade war. And I want to do a shout out to our sponsor today, Moomoo. I've been buying US stocks and ETS for the longest time and Moomoo is a fantastic commission-free platform I use daily. And that's why I want to share with you an awesome event happening. Moomoo is partnering with Nasdaq to host their 12th anniversary global paper trading. Now, this is an exciting event where you pit your investing and trading skills with competition around the world at zero risk. Moomoo will provide a virtual fund of 1 million for you to experience real market trading. They are fabulous prices for you to win. If you have a positive weekly return from the paper trading competition, you can share up to $20,000 worth of stock cash coupons. And if you're one of the top three globally, your name and your face will be flashed on the NASDAQ screen in New York and receive up to $10,000 in stock cash coupons. Now, signing up is straightforward. Just use my link to register for the competition and you'll also receive one additional month of NASDAQ Total View Market Data valued at $25.99 absolutely free. This competition is brought to you by Momo. It's an investment and trading platform I use. Whether it's buying stocks, ETFs, or money market funds, it's the smarter way to invest. Best of all, if you sign up today, there are welcome rewards, including a stock bundle worth up to $1,034. Get an additional $20 when you sign up using my link. You also get lifetime commission-free trading in the US stock market. So give Mumu a try and start investing today. Beijing is now planning an incredible stimulus package of $1.4 trillion. And that's over 10 trillion RMB worth of fiscal firepower. Never in recent history has China considered dropping such a big financial bomb. What's interesting is the timing of this move. The government is waiting for the results of the US elections before they drop the bombshell. The stimulus could be approved just after the US elections. The elections are on the 5th of November, and China might just launch the votes by November the 8th. If Trump gets into office, this stimulus package could even increase. It might even double $2 trillion to protect China's economy. 4 trillion yuan will be used to directly help purchase idle land and properties over the next 5 years. Over 70% of Chinese wealth is tied up in real estate. So this is a move to shore up sentiment. If people see their net worth stabilizing, they'll be out there more motivated to spend. They'll just head out and they'll spend the money. And unlike the G7 economies, they are heavily settled with a ton of debt. China can't afford their stimulus. While rates in the US are staying high because of inflation, Chinese bond yields are actually dropping. This means more cheap money can be borrowed to bolster the Chinese economy. In October alone, China injected $70 billion in cash to stabilize the banking market. Beijing is making sure the banks they have a ton of liquidity to continue lending money to people. Businesses in China won't suddenly encounter a crash in the money supply. The only way China can accomplish this is with low interest rates. Inflation is very low, so the government can continue slashing rates down. What's interesting is how China's consumption is starting to rebound. Despite the narrative of China collapsing and all the EU tariffs, 
people are still buying Chinese goods. Domestic consumption plus export strength is pushing China back to manufacturing growth. Despite a week-long holiday in China, manufacturing PMI has been driven back to the expansion zone. Services has also been growing every single month. The initial stimulus is starting to take effect. The Chinese economy is beginning to recover. And more importantly, the shift to domestic consumption has begun. In China, household consumption accounts for just 40% of GDP. In the US, it's very different. It's well over 65%. So there's enormous room for growth just from the local Chinese people alone. The West and China, they are moving rapidly towards total decoupling. Trump has also threatened to slap countries abandoning the dollar with an insane punishment. A 250% import tariff. It's crazy, it's wild, but this could happen. And we will keep the US dollar as the world's reserve currency. We're losing it fast. Nobody else will be able to do that. We're already missing so many. Russia's gone. China essentially is gone. China's the one that wants to take it. North Korea's gone. They're all getting out. But with me, it's different. I'm going to say, you know what? You want to get out? Yes, we decided to get out. We're going to go with Russia. We're going to go with China. We're going to... I said, that's okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put a 250% tariff on anything you sell us in this country. And you know what they're going to do? Sir, we've decided that we want to stay in your currency, sir. We're going to stay in your currency. So strap yourselves in for the 2025 financial war. We are going to get front row seats to see the biggest decoupling of the two biggest world economies. The US and the G7, they'll band together in one block. China and Russia, they'll group together and trade more with the global south. And because of this, a few things will happen. Lesser trade with the US economy, which means a lesser need to hold and trade in dollars. Since 2008, countries, they have been holding fewer and fewer US bonds. They reached a peak of nearly 57% just before the housing collapse. But today, we are at only 30.4%. And this is going to complicate Trump's agenda to reshore US manufacturing. Deficit spending for the US will continue to get more and more expensive. The tariffs are effectively helping to push up borrowing costs for the US higher. It's not just consumers getting hammered by higher inflation. The second order effects of this trade war is a bigger debt burden and even larger deficits in the near future. When China launches their stimulus, it's not going to benefit the US or the West very much. It's extremely critical we understand two realities on the ground. Firstly, local Chinese settlement is starting to turn against Western brands. We are starting to see more and more Chinese people move to support their domestic companies. They are choosing to buy local products. Instead of a BM or Mercedes, consumers are going for BYDs or Lee Auto Cars. Instead of iPhones, people are buying more and more Huawei phones. It's not just the US going full protectionist. China is also moving to defend their own local brands. And when China launches their stimulus, we can best believe the money will be carefully allocated. When the US did their bailouts in 08 and 2020, the money was basically given to everyone. It went everywhere. It was mayhem. China, however, would probably allocate the money to the growth sectors of tomorrow. Since 2015, Beijing has been investing more and more in computers, science and software. And this includes semiconductors, EVs and robotics. And this trend isn't going to stop. Any stimulus given to the local people will likely be channeled back into these industries. So instead of random cash injections, we could see big subsidies for Chinese products. Companies in these sectors could also get incredibly cheap loans as well. And this is perhaps their biggest advantage. China doesn't have the burden of a private military industrial complex. They don't need to pander to them. They can focus on critical industries to build up the civilian economy. It's important we understand how crazy 2025 will be. China will be moving to decouple with the US and that much is written in stone. Now how fast or how slow things will get depends on Trump and his tariffs. If he decides to go all the way, we can expect China to double or even triple their $1.4 trillion stimulus. Now on the flip side, if somehow Kamala Harris wins, then we can expect less drastic measures. Globalization will continue to limp along like a zombie for a while longer. However, I really doubt a Kamala win at this point. So we should prepare for extreme outcomes. We could get a melt-up situation where both China and the US they are both forced to print money. 
or a meltdown might happen if global trade collapses. But let me know what you think. Will Trump start a global trade war and how is China going to respond to this? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.